Today at Two Day Pass, we're going to cover the 10 most popular reasons why people failed, not popular, most common reasons why people fail the driving test. We are here, as you can see in front of us, at a very technical driving test center called Greenford. Now, on this 10 part series, I will be breaking each reason down into bite sized pieces. So at the end of this video, you'll see clip two and three and four and five to a complete season. So I hope this is beneficial. If it is, please smash the like button and stay tuned for now, reason number 10. 10. Okay, so reason number 10 is reverse parking and control is the reason why most people will fail reverse parking. Observations are super important. So what do you do? Where do you observe before you do your reverse park exercise? Is it just over one shoulder out the blind spot or do you need to check all the way around the vehicle before reversing? So this is a driving test route which I'm actually covering. So it's one of the test routes at Greenford which will be following the signs to Rainers Lane which is a very popular route and it leads into some of the reasons why people fail that if you don't know you will fail so stay tuned to the end of this season because you will see every single little tricky part of this main test route and if you don't know it you ain't passing so we're going to start off with the reverse park and control i'm going to take the next vehicle here on the left let's pull up alongside roughly a meter apart now the control part is not finishing the maneuver off in the requirements now the requirements are within two car lengths and a reasonable distance from the curb now if you haven't seen my reverse park uh, video then check out the channel and the playlist because you'll find the reverse park video there which will go through all the steps that you need to know how to successfully reverse park a vehicle now i have finished this maneuver off in the requirements i am within two car lengths from the vehicle in front and i am a reasonable distance from the curb how do you know that you're within the requirements so two car lengths that means if you can see a car space between you and the vehicle in front you have reached two car lengths do not exceed that distance one car length is the space that you can see in front of you between the end of your vehicle and the beginning of the vehicle that you've used to do your reverse park exercise the second car space is the space that you're occupying you can end up or finish the maneuver anywhere between this distance but you must not exceed this Another part of this requirement is the reasonable distance from the curb. You will hear a lot of instructors tell you a drain width or examiners mention a drain width. That's roughly a foot, which means from the elbow to the tip of your fingers. This is a foot, which is about the same width. All right, maybe not quite, but almost as a steering wheel. That's quite a good reference because you can see that and you know how far away uh, you must be from the curb. Any further than this drain width or steering wheel a foot away from the curb is a fail. Now, a lot of people will mess this up like I mentioned. Don't go and watch it now, but after this video, if you're looking to sort of study how to do the reverse park is because of the angle. The angle is the most difficult part of the reverse park exercise. So you start the maneuver alongside the vehicle, roughly a door width between you and the vehicle. You move back about a half a car length then you reach the angle, which is the hardest part. So it's a full lock steering, come to the angle, full lock steering, and you're finished. If you watch this, you'll see how easy it is in this vehicle. If you are in a different vehicle, it might be a little bit more tricky because there's no reverse camera. Okay, guys, well, thanks for watching. If this has been informative, please make sure you smash that like button and subscribe for part two. See you on the next one. Check it out over here.